you can you can start. Okay. Well, thank you for organizing this arena. This is great. I think the killing of Qasem Soleimani is one of the biggest achievements by the United States of America during the last 40 years. I have known quite a bit about uh, Qasem Soleimani uh, very closely from working with the Shia establishment in Iraq for about 20 years, specifically with Ahmed Chalabi. And Ahmed Chalabi had direct dealings with uh, Qasem Soleimani continuously before 2003 until he uh, passed away in 2015. And I've heard a lot of details about him that is uh, very, very uh, unique about a person to achieve this kind of uh, status. Uh, let me give you some back, uh, quick backgrounds. I personally served in the Iraqi-Iranian war for five years. I was in the Iraqi Air Force. And uh, uh, during my uh, several meetings with the Iranians, uh, when I was working with the Council of Prime Minister in Iraq and other places in Iraq with Ahmed Chalabi here, and, uh, they, they have a strong uh, uh, complex of the war between Iraq and Iran. And they still, every Iranian... Uh, official now is a graduate of this war and they have a huge uh, feeling of shame of because of the loss they have suffered this war every time they hear i was an officer in the iraqi army they get outraged and they cannot control their uh, feelings and uh, the, the second thing uh, the, there is something uh, i'm going to say things you probably not going to have you not you have not heard before uh, there's a, an important background information that people did not look at in Washington and even elsewhere. Uh, the era of Saddam after 1990, all what we know about Saddam, the legacy of Saddam, the nostalgia of Saddam is about pre-1990. He was a different, after 1990, he became a completely a different person. Uh, even the Iraqi intelligence officers, which I meet, who worked for Saddam, they, they deny and they run away from answering questions about the relation, the, the intelligence cooperation between uh, the Iranian government and Saddam after 1990. The cooperation was, uh, was very big and the oil smuggling lines of Iraq was going through Iran in, in uh, coordination and, and partnership with Rafsanjani. Uh, several Iraqi dissidents were uh, were killed inside Iran uh, with the help of, uh, of the Iranian facilitated Iraqi intelligence entering. People think thought people still think Saddam was anti-Iran after 1990, uh, but he was not. I, in fact, the relation between Iran and uh, Saddam's government after 1990 was more or less like now the relation between Turkey and Iran. They cooperate on certain issues and they differ on issues they didn't talk about. But they cooperate quite a bit about intelligence and oil smuggling. And believe it or not, the oil smuggling lines now that Iran uses are the same ones that Saddam used in cooperation with them and with the same people. They are the same Iraqi individuals who did this service for Saddam. They're doing it now for Iranian IRGC and the Quds Force. I know them by names. So uh, the second thing which is important is, uh, is the, uh, the uh, after the Saddam's demise, Iraq became deficient of a dictatorship. The Iraqi people kind of uh, got uh, addicted to, uh, to dictatorship. Uh, believe it or not, the ideas of democracy did not sound very attractive to many Iraqis. And, uh, and uh, Qasem Soleimani was able to capture on this. And he became the replacement of Saddam in Iraq over time. He was able to get this full power of awarding you with lots of money and position or even kill you uh, at, the, at the spot if you don't obey him. And a lot of the Iraqi, especially the Shia Ba'athists, enlisted underneath him. The de-Ba'athification became an attraction uh, to uh, hunt those uh, who have uh, uh, worked against Iran, especially Sunni uh, 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 Sunni uh, pilots and officers, but, uh, most of them were killed by Badr, uh, but, uh, but at the same time became a recruitment ground for the IRGC for uh, former Iraqi military officers who, uh, who are high-ranking Baptists, but they are Shia. And they, those, they became almost the right hands of the new system. Uh, like, for example, Rashid Flayeh of uh, of Basra, the head of the police of Basra, he's the one of the most notorious officers who killed hundreds, tens of thousands of Shia 
during Saddam's 1991 era, uh, the, when the revolt happened. And again, he was killing the Shia demonstrators now in, in Basra. Uh, the, uh, so uh, the, Qasim Soleimani, the things I have known for him, for example, in 2013, I was told uh, by a very strong source that uh, uh, Qasim uh, Rafsanjani, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Rouhani uh, uh, complained to the Ayatollah, to, the, uh, to Khamenei, that Qasim Soleimani is receiving $3 billion cash a year from the uh, Iranian government without, uh, uh, without any receipts or without any uh, commitment to spending on what kind of spending he's doing. And Rouhani was doing it because according to these sources, uh, the Iranians were suffering a lack of cash, a lack of dollar to be more specific. And uh, Ayatollah Khamenei told uh, Rouhani, don't interfere, let him work. So imagine that one person, one single person has a budget of $3 billion and controls several countries. I used to, we have a joke in Baghdad. We say Qasim Soleimani comes in the back of his trunk. He has a, a car bomb and he has a bag of money. If, you, if he likes you, he will stick the car bomb to your car and leave. And if he doesn't like you, he will give you the bag of money and maybe you become a minister. The other important thing, which is nobody also touched on or even talked about, the way the Iranians operate in Iraq, they operate as a party, as a local political party. Uh, this way, they have uh, this party is the ruling, is the real ruling arm of the Iranian power. If you look at the government of Iraq, it's completely dysfunctional. They cannot even build a road. But when it comes to their function, uh, loyalty to Iran, they are perfect. There are no mistakes there. So there has to be a reason. So the Iranians established with that, which I call it al tanzim which is basically an or a secret organization, which will take and collect people from all the Iraqi society, Christians, uh, seculars, religious, uh, Kurds, Arabs, Turkomans, doesn't matter. And you enlist them in this organization and they become the basket for the uh, upcoming government or for the uh, upcoming bureaucrats. You can, even they will, they will always attract people who are anti-Iran. And immediately I notice them because they start to uh, 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 avoid mentioning Khamenei in their speeches. Uh, they avoid attacking Iran directly. This means they have been enlisted. But to be enlisted is not easy. You have to commit some nefarious type of work that will hold your life in their hand. So uh, that's how I, I always receive calls from my friends in Washington, uh, the new minister of defense. Who is he? Where did he appear from? Well, he appeared from this basket. This organization is a line organization that is connected all through heads of lines and uh, then it, it, it all connected to uh, Quds Force. To be more specific, that was the idea of Qasim Soleimani. This way, Iranians were able to have a dictator, Qasim Soleimani, and have one party rule through this uh, 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 secret tanzim or, or organization. Uh, the other thing is Qasim Soleimani's thinking exceeds any ideas uh, of tactical uh, or uh, short term level. He is a very ambitious person and he is an obsessed man. Uh, people who works with him knows him that he works all around the clock. He doesn't stop working and he is vicious and he pursues his goals very, very, uh, very strongly. He has networks that even the Iranian government doesn't know much about. He has uh, connections and personal uh, influence. I used to attend the Shia Alliance meetings and the Shia figures, all the big Shia figures will decide something and will vote on it. And then they will say at the end, let's wait for the Hajji. Let's wait for the Hajji to uh, approve. I didn't know who's the Hajji first. Then I learned that Hajji, the Hajji is Qasim Soleimani. Of course, his right hand man in Iraq was Abu Mahdi al Muhandis, whom I have met numerous times and met uh, uh, at length in meetings and so forth. He was another notorious person who was killed with him which I think it was a big achievement. This man has a long history of terrorism and uh, that you can look at uh, everywhere. Uh, the other thing about uh, Qasim Soleimani, uh, he had uh, two major projects in Iraq. Uh, the first project is to make Baghdad a second, uh, a second capital 
for the wilayat al-faqih regime. Uh, it seems that Qasr Soleimani was kind of not very sure they could uh, con continue to control Tehran. I don't know what's the reasons behind them, just speculating uh, after the death of Khamenei, who knows? But he was very ambitious to make Baghdad as the second, if not the first, uh, capital for their wilayat al-faqih. Uh, and he was determined to, to annex Iraq to Iran. Uh, the second thing, he had another major project which will open the road for him towards all the way to Israel and all the way to Saudi Arabia uh, is basically the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the change of the composition of the Iraqi people, the, the obliteration of the Sunni areas. Iranians look at the Sunnis of Iraq as strategic danger. Despite the, the, the sub, total submittance now of all Sunni uh, politicians almost in the government and the parliament, I, we call them in Iraq the Khamenei Sunnis, uh, they still think the Sunnis are potential threat to them. So uh, they, they, they did this uh, complete uh, 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 hauling of the Sunnis. And now the Sunnis of Iraq are, are people without land or land without people. Uh, that's why the, the refugee camps will never close. And that's, uh, so, so the, the amount of projects that, uh, or the size of the project that Qansu uh, Soleimani works on, it has no match in, in, in modern history. Uh, the changing of the composition of Iraq and the region, even in Syria, uh, transferring thousands of Shia, Afghans and others, and they get, uh, making them uh, residents in, in Sunni areas in Syria. Uh, therefore, I think uh, giving all these uh, uh, things, it is impossible uh, to, uh, to have a person who could replace uh, Qasim Soleimani. It is also important to notify everybody and remind everybody that Qasim Soleimani is responsible for killing at least 603 US soldiers in Iraq. One of them is my nephew who was kidnapped by Asa'ab al-Haqan and killed. He was a US corporal in Iraq. So this is, this is the type of person. I think uh, the post Qasim Soleimani era now, it's, uh, it's uh, I mean, uh, there, uh, there was a g huge gain uh, by killing Qasim Soleimani. And I, I believe the killing of Qasim Soleimani, uh, 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 the right decision was made by uh, President Trump, obviously, was uh, would have would not have not happened without the October uh, uh, revolution. This revolution changed the perception of people about Iraq because for the first first time, Shia young people from hardcore Shia areas, not Sunnis, not Kurds, these are hardcore Shia, very committed Shia, demonstrated openly against Qasem Soleimani, demonstrated openly against the Iranian hegemony in Iraq. And the burning of the Karbala consulate, in, which is the cradle of Shiism of the world, uh, uh, the first burning which uh, President Trump retweeted on Twitter was a big uh, change. I think that was very convincing to President Trump and me, many people in Washington that killing Qasem Soleimani will not outrage the Shia of Iraq. Uh, at least the majority of the Shia of Iraq hates him and didn't want him to be. Uh, the demonstrations continue until today. Uh, and I'm continue in touch, continuously in touch with the Shia who are proud Shia, but they're also proud Iraqis who doesn't want the militias who belong to Iran and Iran's proxy, proxies to destroy their lives. And they have destroyed their cities. We see any Shia city now in the South is completely devastated. Uh, so I think I call this generation, by the way, I call them the George Bush generation because these are the outcome of the 2003 of liberation of Iraq. If some people think that the liberation of Iraq was not useful, that would be one of the benefits, of the few benefits of it, at least. Those people have lived under no dictatorship. They don't understand fear. They lived with open internet and open information world, uh, which is opposite from what under Saddam. And those are the people who rose against uh, uh, this, uh, the Iranians in Iraq, which I call them the millennials of Iraq. Uh, this is my fast take on Qasem Soleimani, and I welcome any questions. Thank you.